Psalms, chapter 104. Bless the Lord, O my soul. Exactly what we read last night. O Lord, my God, thou art very great. That everything he's done, from creation to everything, he's the almighty. I mean, then you, you get these people, you know, they got the greatest sports team. Nothing compared to what God is. Thou art clothed with honor and majesty. So what covers the nakedness of God is honor. And how many people honor him today? But yeah, everybody's going to go to heaven. Everyone's in heaven. Now, if you honor God, and as we spoke about the fathers yesterday, and one of the things that, that children are told both in the Old and New Testament, to honor thy mother and father. Listen, a child that will not learn how to honor his parents is not going to honor God. It says in Hebrews 11, about, I think it's 6 or 7, around verse 8, that, you know, you got to believe who God is. There is no faith at all. Your parenting is the greatest result for someone to serve God and serve God right. They can see mother and father. John writes, how can you love, your, how can you hate your brother and say you love God whom you've seen your brother and you haven't seen God? He's covered with majesty, clothed with majesty, royalty, the highest honor. And wait till we see him cl get clothed up and suit up on the horse to come back as we follow him with a vesture dipped in blood. Who covers thyself with light as with a garment, who stretches out the heavens like a curtain. Now, the only thing you can reference that verse to in, in the majesty, and I don't know, but it's those aurora boreales as you see up, up north in Alaska. I've never seen them. I've seen videos of them, and I guarantee the video don't do justice. They actually may be watching them with the naked eye. God is clothed with light, for Christ is light. God is light. You know why you need to get a new body before you see God? It blow your head out. Moses saw the Lord, and he had to put a veil on his face because the children of Israel saw that his face shone. That means it was enlightened. It was bright. Who layeth the beams of his chambers in the waters. Who maketh the clouds his chariot. Well, Ezekiel sees a really weird kind of thing God is traveling on. And the Bible says he cometh with clouds. The rapture is spoken about we shall meet in the clouds. One of these days you're going to be looking up at that cloud and saying, Oh, that one looks like an elephant. That one looks like a, a rhinoceros. That one looks like a bunch of Christians gathering. And there you are, looking down. Woe unto them that desire the day of the Lord. For what prophet is he? It is a day of clouds. Now, I've completely blown that scripture right off. And it's funny, because how can it be cloudy and everybody know it? Because the earth and the world is going to be completely darkened. No sun, no moon, no light. You know, there are clouds in the middle of the night. You just don't see them. What did Christ re re represent our church as? The church age as night. You're not listen. When the rapture happens, I don't think you're gonna be able to go outside and say, "Oh, there's all the Christians." Goodbye. Walketh upon the wings of the wind. Now you know the wind don't have wings. It's figure of illustration. Christ walked on the ocean or the sea. See, God is. Great. He's, he's, he's wonderful. He can walk on the wind and he can walk on the water. Who maketh his angels all. Oh, maketh his angels spirits. Spirits that also can, can be put into uh, flesh like men throughout the, throughout the uh, Old Testament. 
his ministers a flame, a flaming fire. Second Corinthians eleven fourteen, First Kings twenty two twenty two. Who laid the foundation of the earth? You mean it wasn't the Big Bang? That who is God? That it should not be removed forever. Well, uh -oh. Peter says the earth. Yeah, but the forever there as far as time. One day time will be destroyed and will be no more as we go into eternity. Maybe the foundation of earth God will use to make the new earth. Don't go be throwing the Bible out just because you don't understand it. Just pray and ask God a little bit, and he may answer the question. He may not. But God is right. His word is right. And we'll read on. If we don't know, and we're stupid humans, there are dust in the ground that we read last night. Thou covers it. All right, the earth with the deep as with a garment. So the earth is mostly all water. But more than that, the water stood above the mountains. Well, at what point did that happen? That was Noah's flood. That was also maybe Genesis 1-1 one, one, between Genesis 1-2, where the world was completely covered with ice age. I mean ice. It was frozen. At thy rebuke, at thy rebuke, they fled. At the voice of thy thunder, they hastened away. I don't know who the they is. The waters. They go up by the mountains. They go down by the valleys unto the place where thou hast formed, founded them. I mean, it was Genesis. The flood says the water went into the earth. Thou hast set a bond that they may not pass over, that they turn not again to cover the earth. Genesis 9, 15, God said, I will no longer ever again drown the whole earth out. Well, there are floods over, yeah, but he, he didn't say about the localized floods. He said the entire earth. Those waters cannot flood the entire world again. And he made a covenant and put a rainbow in the sky to remember that covenant ever since Genesis chapter 9. And the world has taken that covenant and turned it into a fruity, tooty, sodomite symbol. What does a rainbow colored uh, have to do with two sodomites who want to disobey and do what God told them not to do, which he calls an abomination? I can't even imagine. I mean, if you want a symbol for sodomites, why don't you put a fruitcake? He sendeth the springs into the valleys, which run through the hill, among the hills. And God did that in the wilderness for Israel. Where there were no valley, where there were no springs and water for them, God made a way for them to drink. So when you walk up to a river, like we're at the Halifax River, unless man has done his tools and cement and all that, that river was placed by God. God put a vast ocean between Europe and Africa, between the Americas. They gave drink to every beast of the field. Wild asses quenched their thirst. So God gave us water to drink. And for animals to drink. By then shall the fowls of the heaven have their habitation, the waters, which sing among the branches. And you know birds sing. There you go. Birds will live by water. Humans will live by water. Water is a need. He watereth the hills from his chambers. The earth is satisfied with the fruit of thy work. Water brings fruit, brings harvest. 
brings plants, brings animals. He causes the grass to grow for the cattle. Oh, now you got to eat. Water is more important in your life. You can live longer without food than you can without water. Notice the priority that God put there. Water is first. You will die of, of, uh, of lack of water than you will quicker than food. He causes the grass to grow for cattle. The herb for the service of man. Fruits and vegetables. Herbs. He that he that there yeah, that he may bring forth food out of the earth. So where to eat? The wine that maketh glad the heart of man. Now, I don't think that's fermented wine. I want to be, you know, just to sit down and have a glass of, of grape juice. Maybe after a hard day's work or just the heat of the day. See, when you get perverted wine, and it may be intoxicated, it may be. I don't think so. You get perverted wine, you get too glad. And you start doing stupid things. You think God wants that? You think God allowed the stupidity a drunk will get from drinking too much wine? Then again, it's done in a it's done in a balance. It's not overdoing it. And oil make the face to shine. Now it's not makeup. Oil is a property to help your face. Clean your face. You're in a desert situation here with the, the blazing sun. And you'll find that this annoying oil for the, head, for the face it shows up often. And bread which strengthens man's heart. So food. The trees of the Lord are full of sap. The cedars of Lebanon which he has planted. Oh, so God planted the trees. They didn't happen by chance. God planted them. I realize when the, when the trees were in the garden, they were there. Boom. God didn't put a, a, a seed in the ground and wait how long it takes for a tree to grow and then went on. No. Those trees were mature. Where the birds make their nests. As for the stork, the fir trees are her house. All right, you learned something. If you never knew anything about a stork, she likes fir trees. So you learn things in the Bible. The high hills are, listen, the stork loves the fir trees. Now, I don't know who wrote this one, doesn't say anything. But if it was David, like he wrote Psalm 103, you know what David did his entire life? He was a shepherd. You know what a shepherd would do? Sometimes he'd just kick back in the fields while the sheep were eating and just sit there, play with his slingshot, practice, play with his, his, his uh, uh, string instrument. Or he'd just sit down and watch na nature. And then he would record what he lived through life. The high hills are a refuge for the wild goats. And the rocks for the conies. I forget which kind of animal that was. He appointed the moon for the seasons. And men are to plant by the moon. When you pick up a chart on how to plant, it is by the moon and the phases of the moon. And if you plant on an off time that does not comprehend to what the moon phrase should be, you're not going to get a good crop. And it says back in Genesis chapter 1 that they were given for signs, for seasons. The sun knows his going down. The sun knows what time to go down. And man tries to change that by making, uh, you know, set your, hour, set your clock an hour back, set your clock an hour ahead. You know, look at that. The sun doesn't know what it is. Now, you know, he did it yesterday at 5 o'clock. Now today it's 6 o'clock. I don't know. No. You're the one that changed the time. You're the one that did the thing. The sun will do it. Will have been doing it for how many years? I don't know. How many decades? How many eons? 
I don't know eons. But one day the sun will not show its life. The moon will not be bright. And I wonder if it's still going to circle the earth. Or the earth circle it. Thou makest darkness. And it is night. God made night. Where all the beasts of the forest do creep. Did you know that? Did you know that the animals are up in the middle of the night? So what do you say to somebody who's up all night? They're a party animal. Beast. The young lions roar after their prey and seek their meat from God. So when you watch these videos, these lions are about to take down an animal and have dinner, God gave it to them. You know, they'll say, well, the lions are strategically looking at the herd and they're getting themselves all up and ready. And blah, 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 blah. We don't know anything because we're not a lion. And the Bible says, God, God speaks. Hey, Mr. Lion, yeah, that one right there. That's the one you're going to get for dinner. And they go after that and they get their dinner. Now, if it was man, he go after the other one or another one. The sun arises. They gather themselves together and they lay them down in their den. When the sun's up, these animals go to bed. You know people like that? They're up all night long, eating and drinking, and then when the sun's up, they're gone. Man goes forth unto his work and to his labor until evening. I guess there's no second and third shift in the Bible. You know what they say with people that work third shift? They die early. Back to life. God never meant men to work at night. But man wants to be at night so he can make his money. O oh Lord, how manifold are thy works. Manifold is you got one source and it plugs out to many sources. God's source is mercy, and he spreads it out to many people. Are there are many for thy works? In wisdom hast thou made them all. The earth is full of thy riches. Gold, silver, oil. All the products that come out of earth. The ore. They are God. Diamonds. It's God's. And it took wisdom for God to create all. So is this great and wide sea, wherein are things creeping innumerable, both small and great beasts. There goes the ships. There is that line, Leviathan, whom thou hast made to play therein. So when you look at all the old world, ancient world maps, you see on it, you see the ships, and you see this little serpent. Why would you see a serpent on an old world map in the Atlantic Ocean? Because they were Bible believers. The Bible says there is Leviathan. Why would he be a dragon? Because the Bible says in Revelation that Satan is a... Listen, they were Bible believers back then. You imagine a map company today, I forget what their name is. You imagine them putting a, a, a Leviathan on, on a map today and an atlas. Somebody over and say, well, what would you put that there? Well, because the Bible says it over here in Psalms 104. And Revelation says that a serpent... I mean, yeah, the serpent and the devil is uh, a dragon. Man, they sue him. 
They'd be, oh, 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 you, you're threatening the poor little dragons and the poor little serpents and calling them Satan. That's not nice. How dare you believe that Bible? You know? You know who the first four, first, yeah, first four apostles were that Jesus called? They were shipmen. They were fishermen. They used ships. And God used them. What did Jonah use? Who got saved from Jonah? Yeah, I know the men of Nineveh, but then they, the men on the ship get saved first? Who got saved when, when Paul was shipwrecked? And one of the plagues in, the, in Revelation, in the tribulations, one-third of the ships will be destroyed. Why? Because they turn their love from, from money, and they don't want to worship the God. These wait all upon thee, God, that thou mayest give them their meat in due season. The, the fishermen wait for God. Now, where do you see that happening? It says that Peter and them told all night long. Jesus said, cast your net on the right side of the boat. So Peter cast the net. Not nets. Peter, uh, Jesus said nets. Peter cast a net and almost broke the thing. So right there, you see the Lord Jesus Christ. That thou givest them, that thou givest them, they gather. So they said that they brought the net on, on, on the shore and they counted. Did you get that? You're reading the Gospels right now. Thou opens thy hand and they are filled with good. I think he even gives you a number of the fish. Thou hidest thy face. They are troubled. They hit their face because Jonah was a backslider. And they were in trouble. They wouldn't listen to Paul, the, the prophet, the preacher. They were in trouble. They were they would not listen to Noah, the ark navigator, or not ark builder, and they were in trouble. They sailed out, and on a Sunday night, with all their riches and their, their, their glorifying of money and all that. And God just sent an iceberg. And they were troubled. Thou takest away their breath, they die. Look at that. Even though water is a need. Water is a need more than food. If God takes your breath, they die. And return to their dust. Ecclesiastes 3.21 Imagine that, turning to their dust, they're out in the water. Thou sendest forth thy spirit, the Holy Spirit. They are created. Thou renewest the face of the earth. Also, the Holy Spirit had part in the creation, Genesis 1 3. The glory of the Lord shall endure forever. The Lord shall rejoice in his works. Wait till the millennium when the curse is removed off this earth. He look upon the earth, it trembleth. He touches the hills and they smoke. Second Advent. I will sing unto the Lord as long as I live. I will sing praise to my God while I have my being. Do you sing to God or do you just sing a general... My meditation of him shall be sweet. You just think on the Lord. You just rejoice in the Lord. I will be glad in the Lord. Let the sinners be consumed out of the earth. And they will. And let the wicked be no more. Oh, yeah. The wicked will be no more one day. Bless thou the Lord, O my soul. Praise ye the Lord. O Lord, my
my God, when I in awesome wonder consider all the worlds thy hands have made. I see the stars, I hear the rolling thunder, thy power throughout the universe displayed. Then sings my soul, my Savior God, to thee, how great thou art. How great thou art, then sings my soul, my Savior God to thee. How great thou art, how great thou art. And when I think that God his Son not sparing sent him to die, I scarce can take it in That on the cross My burden gladly bearing He bled and died To take away my sin Then sings my soul My Savior God to thee How great thou art How great thou art Sings my soul, 